I am David Sundra. I'm a consultant petrophysicist for BlackRock QI. I'm going to talk about well log data acquisition. This is a basic overview of the methods used to acquire this essential data. Without this, exploration, appraisal, and development phases of any field will not be possible. This data yields very important parameters used by all explorationists around the world. I will start with giving a quick introduction and basic concepts, and then I'll move on to other topics of the course. What is a well log? A lot of people ask me that question every time I talk about well data. A log is defined as a continuous record of rock properties by a depth. You could say a graph. And here on the right hand side, there's an example of the first log done in 1927. So, what are the rock properties we're talking about? We're talking about lithology, porosity, permeability, and water saturation. Lithology is a physical characteristic of a rock, such as color, texture, grain size, and composition. Porosity is the amount of voids or holes in the rock. Permeability, which is very related to porosity, is the ease by which the fluid and gas flow through the rock. And water saturation, which is very important for petrophysicists, is the portion of the rock which is saturated with water. Whatever is not water, it's got to be hydrocarbons. And one last property, resistivity. Resistivity is simply the resistance of the rock to electric current. So hydrocarbons, hard rock, and fresh water are highly resistive to electric flow, while silent water is conductive and has low resistivity. This concept is very important for petrophysicists and to get a good water saturation. While logs are run, geological sampling during drilling leaves a lot of imprecise records of formation encountered. Logs fill the gap between cuttings and cores, and with experience and powerful computers, they can also replace cores and they certainly enough information to put outcrop reality into the surface. The other purpose of running logs is to identify productive zone, the reservoir, the oil and gas, and estimate the reserves. The third reason is for geological mapping, where you can actually determine fascist relationships and drilling locations. These cuttings, as I explained in my previous slides, are produced when the drilling bit grinds the formation and the mud that is flowing takes the fragments all the way to the surface. At the surface, these pieces of rock are collected by the mud logger and analyzed. I show the examples of the drilling bits on the right hand side. Cuttings. These, you can see from these pictures that the engineers are looking at these cuttings when they get to the surface. One is outside, and he does a first assessment of the cuttings, and the second engineers, they are in the cabin looking at the various uh, fragments of rock to find out what minerals and fossils they contain. And then they do a mud log, which is the uh, mud log on the right-hand side, with lithology, uh, fossils, uh, fascists, and all the geological information that the petrophysicists and the geologists will find very useful. Core. I mentioned core in my last slide. This is the operation which is done mainly in appraisal and development wells. It's done by in replacing the drilling string of the hollow uh, string, sorry, where the rock from the interesting part of the well lies, such as the reservoir. This is taking example from the reservoir and put into boxes and then going to the laboratory. This laboratory will actually calculate and estimate formations, porosity, permeability, grain density, and fluid saturations. And then this will be used in any petrophysical analysis. As you can see from this side, core samples are taken at intervals and they only cover about 30 meters. So it's quite a small coverage. Coring is very expensive, so geologists need to pick their intervals with care. In this section, I can show you the commercial and geological uses. On the left-hand side is the reservoir, a gas reservoir. 
And on the right hand side, there are the geological um, fascias and structures you can see from the logs. Before we can start talking about logging, we need to have an idea of the drilling process. When an oil and gas company decides to drill an exploration well, it's because data and geophysical interpretations have given a complete favorite outlook. Now, the drilling company being assigned by the client moves to location either on land or offshore and lays down all the heavy equipment, direct drilling strings, draw works, motors, bits, mud pumps, etc. Onshore operations are perhaps the more complicated as you need to prepare to the ground, accessibility and the site away from the built up areas. On the right hand side, you see a profile of the well drill. You start with the big hole, which is a 26 hole, and then you go into the 17 and a half hole, and then go into 12 and a quarter hole and end up with the eight and a half hole. Logging operations. There are two logging operations to acquire logs, wireline and LWD. Wireline is the old way of acquiring logs, which still is operational, while LWD is newer, cheaper. Then the wireline operations have this divided in two groups. One is an open hole logging and a case hole logging. Open hole is when the Cement and casing has not been applied. Well, case hole hot logging is when casing has been set and you need some information on porosity, water saturation, and want to know how casing and cement are performing. In this slide, we have the wireline logging units. On the left hand side is the offshore, and the, on the right hand side is the onshore units. These are small enclosures that all the operations are being conducted from. Surface equipment for wireline operations. The logging truck provides AC power for the instruments inside the, uh, the truck, and service logging units provide DC power for the down, downhole tools. The computerized data acquisition system is installed inside the logging cap. Logging while drilling. These are recorded when drilling. The drilling sensors are sent uh, downhole with the drilling equipment. You can see on the right hand side, there is a picture or a diagram of the drilling bit at the bottom and all the measuring devices from the, up from there. Now, LWD versus wireline. This slide actually tells you how similar both operations are. You can see the similarities in character for the logs. And on the right hand side of the slide, you can see that they differ in the operation. On the left, of that uh, picture is the wireline data being recorded. So the wireline tool is actually much thinner and shorter. While on the right hand side, the LWD is very robust, thick assembly of casing. These are the um, measurements against uses. So this table is very useful because it tells you on the left hand side on the different mnemonics which are being taken from the data. So you have things like resistivity, porosity, permeability, neutron, and against all the disciplines that they, they, they actually use this data for. So geology, reservoir, geology, petrophysics, geophysics use all this data. Now, in this slide, there's different tools and mnemonics from logging companies. So the three main logging companies in the industry at the moment are Slumberger, Beta Hughes and Halliburton. So they have very, very similar, well, I say the same tools, but with different names. And they have the same units. The digital log formats here are the one used in the industry at the moment. We have last files, least files, delist, and bit. Bit a very old type of log format, while last is a newer, the newer one that is being used at the moment. Dillies is still being used, and lease was also op almost obsolete. Then in the picture formats, the, everybody uses PDF to send the scanned images. Nowadays, the S languages have their own, which is a PDS and Metafiles by Baker Hughes. T files are also in operation at the moment. Data transmission. The data is being collected and being sent 
on real time to the client by means of satellites. So the client can have a look at the data and interpret it straight away. Well, at the end, this is my last uh, slide. On the left-hand side, you have the raw data of all the logs that you acquire. And then on the right-hand side, you have the interpreted data. So you have the lithology, which is a carbonate reservoir, and you have the porosity and water saturations. Thank you. And if you like this presentation, please visit the EAG YouTube channel for more e-lectures.